Hi folks, and welcome back to Fishing with Den. Well, if you've been watching this channel for quite a while, you'd probably seen me fishing this river before. This is the local river in the town, it's just at the back of the high street, and it is tidal, um, it's not very deep, and I haven't been here for probably ooh, 18 months or so. And the simple reason for that is that for most of that time it's been in flood. Anyway, um, completely different venue to what uh, it used to be in terms of the banks. I'm hoping the fishing is going to be the same. I used to catch some really good fish here, a lot of them. As I say, it's probably only six feet deep at its deepest. Tide's on the way out. I've probably got four hours of fishing before low tide. Um, but the purpose of today is to fish with beans. And no, I don't mean Heinz uh, beans. I mean beans beans. I've got red kidney beans, which are obviously bigger than sweet corn. I've got some cannellini beans. I'd never heard of cannellini until the other day when I was in the supermarket. And I've got some butter beans. And these are almost like small potatoes. <laughs> now, oh, sorry, the other thing I've got is chickpeas. And yeah, I know chickpeas ain't beans, but they are bigger than sweet corn. And the purpose of today is to obviously feed up in the normal way through the feeder. Um, I'm going to use sweet corn on the hook certainly to start with. Um, but the point of all this is to see if big beans create bigger or more fish coming into the net. And anyway, that's my excuse for this video, so I'm going to get on with it. I have actually done a little bit of plumbing up with a, uh, a bomb, and as I say, I found about six feet. I'm using my new um, Free Spirit CTX Power Feeder 12 foot special to replace the one I lost some months ago. I've got eight pound Guru drag line onto the, um, the line, which is attached to a matrix. Horizon X 5000 reel, exactly as I always used to do, and a dirty great big homemade feeder. Now this is still below the world championship um, limits, but it is still a really big feeder. Got the twizzle boom here, and I've got a size 10 hook on uh, with a fairly long um, hair on the thing. Now you'll be able to see a bit more detail when I put bait on what that looks like. But basically, I'm just here to have a good day and to see if beans beats out sweet, sweet corn. Couldn't think of the word for a minute, getting old. Anyway, it took me a while to get down here because I've had to walk today. They've built a, a car park up the back. So I've had to come down this great big steep levee bank and I'm still a bit sweaty. So I apologize if I do look a bit uh, sweaty, as I say. Uh, but look, I'm gonna get on with it. I'm gonna put some bait on and I'm gonna get some bait out there and we're gonna see how we go. I'm gonna start off, as I said, just with the usual um, sweet corn, purely because I haven't fished here for so long that I don't know what's in here anymore. So probably going to get about four or five of these on. Yeah, four should do it for now. These are quite small sweet corns, these. But that is the bait on the hair, like that. So as far as the, I'll put my glasses on now so I can see what I'm doing. As far as the ground bait goes, normal ground bait, but this time I'm using the garlic flavour because that seemed to work quite well and I wanted to give that another go too. And all I'm going to do, got some hemp, bit of that on there, bit of that on there, fill the top end up a little bit, push all that in. So we've got a good mixture of ground bait and particles. I will set up the whoops I will set up the zoom camera down there so you can see any bites. Oh, clutch is set a bit light on this new reel. And let's uh, have our first cast. I have actually set it up to fish at 30 turns. Um, but what I'm going to do is get a the usual sort of five or six balls of uh, bait in there and then we'll come back. In fact, I shouldn't have put bait on the hook, should I really? But we'll get this bait in and then we'll get cracking on the fishing. I'll just strike this off and we go back to repetition now. Okay, so that's the last 
bait up ball, just strike that off, and uh, next time in, we'll be fishing. But I'm cooling down fractionally now, so I might just have a quick cup of tea just while the fish turn up. That's a bite, I think. Yay! That probably took about 15 minutes, I reckon, to, uh, to get that. Don't think it's a big one, but quite a nice little bite. I have to admit, I expected to get bites pretty much straight away, but as I said, this place has been ravaged by floods, whoa! So let me clutch out then. And what used to be a proper bank is pretty much all sand now, as you can probably see all the way down there. And when the tide goes out, uh, there's a sand bank that goes almost halfway across the, the river. It has actually produced some new swims further up, but it's difficult to get to now because I can't drive the car down here anymore. Well, wow, this is probably the smallest <laughs> carp I've ever had out here. <laughs> Still, it's the first carp. And we can't argue with that. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, we're looking at... Actually, it's not the smallest I've ever had. It's so-so. I mean, it's two and a half pound or so. Quite reasonable. I'll fish on the same corn baits just to start off with, as I said. Is I just want to get them going a bit, if I can do that. And then we'll change to those beans. It'll be interesting to see how big beans goes, whether it makes any difference whatsoever or not. Certainly so far, that was a fairly small fish, but that was on four or five bits of corn. It's not an insignificant bait, that is it. Right, get back out there. Same again. A few bits of corn, a bit of hemp, and straight into this great big boshing type feeder. We'll see how we go. I may change down to a smaller one later. We'll just see how things progress. Of course, if they do start, they're going to want plenty of feed, so probably will end up staying on this. Right, I don't know if you heard that then, but I'm not clipped up anymore. What I am is uh, using that uh, piece of elastic that I've spoken about before on the line. You can just hear it go through the rings and then you stop it and you know you're in the right place. Having already lost one rod, I don't propose to do it again. And I only lost it because I didn't listen to my own advice. I don't have the anti-reverse on, as you can probably see. It's uh, able to go backwards. It's not clipped up, so if I do get a bite, unlike the last time when I lost it, when I was clipped up, inadvertently, um, you'll see that uh, the reel just goes backwards, and it works for me. I've had that fish, and I haven't managed to get me a cup of tea yet, so I'm going to do that now, I think, just in case it gets a bit fast and furious later, which it has done in the past. I've actually done over 200 pounds in a fairly shortish session on here in the past. So, anything's possible. The only thing is, with all that scouring out from the floods, I don't know if there's any feed there for the fish. I mean, everywhere is sand, and obviously the bottom out there is sand as well. So, who knows? But look, a bit of them working, isn't it? <laughs> Quite warm today. Right. All ready for the next bite. I just had one and I've just got a bite now, so. Yeah, there we go. That's a bit bigger. What a brilliant setup. Yeah, thanks, mate. Kind of English. <laughs> takes forever. Like it. No, it takes forever to get set up. 
Hello, dog. That'll do. <laughs> My dog used to do that. That's quite reasonable. Don't know if you can hear the line, or that elastic rather, marker going through the, the rings. I'm actually trying a different type of nylon. Uh, nylon? Elastic. I had been using the, I think it was very thinnest of the midi hives, but that was still 0.75 a millimeter. This is actually for jewelry <laughs> stringing. Let's get this out there. Yeah, you just hear the thing just go through and you know when to stop and that's it. Very simple and straightforward. Yeah, so this stuff is uh, only 0.5 a millimetre and it's for jewellery stringing, so that's what I'm doing. That's a bit of a jump and a bite. There we go, that'll do me. Oh, third fish in uh, three casts. They're not huge, are they? There used to be fish up to know, 20 pounds plus in here. I've had them to just below 20 and a friend of mine had one uh, just above, so hopefully there's still some big ones in here. We can get through these smaller ones so we can use those big baits. And in fact, I'm going to try cannellini beans next. They're the sort of a intermediate sized bean between the chickpeas and the butter beans. Butter beans I did try the other week um, when I was catching all those small fish, but I was putting those on just a hook, straight hook, no um, speed stop. Same size again, look. Uh, no speed stop. And uh, they were a bit sort of, I don't know, they didn't really um, stay on the hook too well. But that wasn't a day for trying it. This is a day for trying it. Just so you know as well, I'm on a diet and I can smell all the food from the high street over there and it's doing my head in. So I may not be coming back here for a short while. Oh, jumped out of the net. Come on, there we go. Try and keep the feeder out of the net when you're doing this, guys, if you can. Just helps with not being tangled. Maybe a little bit bigger, but not much. Probably three pound again. Okay, cannellini beans then. There we go. Looks a bit like a, a Heinz's baked bean but it's uh, a lot bigger, obviously. I haven't tried to do any flavouring on the things because first time I'm trying it. I'm gonna put this on lengthways. Don't know if you can see that, but like that. I don't know how well it'll stay on, but it feels quite reasonable. It's a decent bit of skin there. But that actually, as a hook bait, seems to hang pretty damn well. Happy with that. Get some bait on. As I say, yes, I am feeding with uh, ground bait and um, corn. I need to get particles out there. And corn is the one I've got the most particles of. And I know it works, so that's it. So, give this a go. Current's not too bad at the moment. <coughs> current here generally isn't too strong anyway, it's just a nice steady current, but I am just going to let the reel just go backwards a bit so I can form the bow just to allow it to uh, stay in position with the lower weight. Should stop about. Whoops, is that a bite? Yeah. <laughs> well, that actually hadn't even hit the bottom properly, had it? Just uh, sort me clutch out. Well, that was a uh, about the most instantaneous bite you've ever seen. Cannellini beans one. <laughs> wow. 
don't think it's any bigger. In fact, what is it? Oh, it is a carp. In fact, it's actually smaller than the previous three. <laughs> well, whoops, and it fell off. Well, okay, but the cannellini beans worked, didn't they? Right, get another cannellini bean on. See if we can get a really, really big one. That one's big, but it's a bit broken. Okay, so cannellini two. Certainly saves trying to thread on four or five bits of corn and it sits pretty well on the hook actually. If you can see that, you can see that the hook is just about right. Okay, repeat the process then. And this time, hopefully, it'll be bigger. I'm going through this ground bait rather quickly. And this was a, I think it's an eight litre tub. <laughs> Homemade, so not as expensive as if you were buying it, which you can't, of course, over here. Just hear that little bit of noise going through the rings, and you know you're right. Okay, I'll allow that to go backwards while I have a quick drink of my tea. Hopefully you can see that from there. Probably needs to go back a little bit further. I usually find one or two turns will do it. About there should probably do it. Sometimes you do have to just put your hand on the rod and so you can strike. <laughs> oh, is this a bit bigger? Might be. Well, can the leany beans doing well? Yeah, he's definitely bigger. How much remains to be seen. I don't think he's massive. But what's this? Is this five or six already? We're probably, I don't know, half an hour in or so. Oops. Problem with this... Oh. Problem with this area is that kids come down and bring shopping trolleys down the little pathway down the back there and they um, throw them in the river which doesn't help so there are some snags although hopefully they've all been kind of washed away with all those floods I think with this kind of uh, a rig you could easily get away with much bigger hooks I'm using a Preston KKHB, which is obviously a barbless, and I think a size 10 is the biggest they do in this hook. And in fact, for the UK, of course, it's probably in most places as big as you're ever going to be allowed. It's not actually that big, it's just a bit of a uh, fantastic fighting fish. Um, yeah, size 10 is probably in a lot of places the biggest you'll be allowed, especially on commercials. I don't mind. It's all good fishing. It actually turns out he's probably a little bit bigger than the other ones. He's probably sort of, I don't know, three and a half pounds or so, I suppose. Really thick, chunky fish. But uh, just goes to show the fish have returned after all the floods. Okay, this time. We're trying the butter bean, and as I say, I don't really know how well this is going to stay on. The ones I literally had a quick go with the other week on a hook didn't stay on very well. In fact, these are so big that I might really need a, a longer um, hair. It's kind of okay. I mean, we'll give it a go, but really, I could probably do with a longer hair than that. However, the fish in here seem to be suicidal today. 
which is great news. I'm really happy about that. And uh, we're certainly putting a few in the net. I mean, if I've had, let's say the average is sort of towards three pounds, just for round figures. And I've had, what's that? I don't know, is that six or something in the space of half an hour? And there's 18 pounds or so. Already it's uh, turned into a good day. Same again then, let it hit the bottom. Allow the reel to go backwards as the bow is forming caused by the, the current. I'm using a 45 gram feeder and that seems to be holding bottom fine for the moment. We'll be coming up to the highest part of the tide shortly. There's it going backwards now. Look, might require one more turn in a second because that won't be much of a bow just on one turn. But it's a nice automatic way to be doing these things. Oh. Bobbing and bouncing. Oh, uh, yeah. What have we got here? Well, at least he's starting to take a bit of line, a bit more slow and ponderous, so could easily be a bigger fish. This is on the butter bean, remember. It's taking a bit longer to get this bite, but he definitely feels like a bigger fish. He's using the current against me, which is what you'd expect. Very slow and ponderous. Of course, after all this, he'll turn out to be another three pound of money. Come on. He's moving towards me, but he's... You can probably tell yourselves that this is a different sort of a fight. GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, start recording. He's right in the edge. Down here. Which is fine. You can't see it, but just literally behind the camera, about 10 feet or so, there's a great big tree dangling in the water. This is a better fish. Oh, come on. This is no three pounder. Oof. Come on, a good test for the rod, isn't it? Woof, let me jump there. <laughs> I've got dogs going in again down there. This is a dog off leash park, so kind of expected really. That's all right. That's why I'm fishing further out, actually. I could fish a lot closer in, but the dogs don't go halfway across the river. Well, some of them do, but depends on how far the owner could throw the ball. Come on. Oh, he's a bigger fish. Well, maybe butter beans do to take out the bigger varieties. Obviously, if the smaller ones didn't want to feed on this because it was too big, it leaves room for these bigger ones to come in and take it. All right, come on. Come on. Oh, oh. <laughs> Whoa, fish. Slow down. Move too fast. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a decent fish. We'll weigh this one. I'll just chuck that in the water for now, but what we'll do is if I Oops, bashed it in my camera now. Come on, fish. Don't want to be damaging him particularly. There we are, look. That's quite reasonable, isn't it? Let's weigh him. Oof. This net weighs one pound three ounces. So we'll zero the scales. Come on, fish, stay still. Stop messing about. Zero. Oh, it's got a big hole in my net, look. 
it weighs 10 pounds 15 so that's 9 pounds 12 <laughs> and he's torn a hole through my net luckily I've got another one <laughs> I do have a piece of a, a dorsal fin from a carp over here and they are serrated a bit like a hacksaw and what happens is you get holes all over your net look and that one obviously just created a bigger one with his dorsal and then sliced the net into two so Here's a brand new one. <laughs> get myself sorted out, we'll get back in there with another butter bean. Okay, well I've had some indications on this bean. Um, again, it took a long time for the first one to... Oh, it's come off, look. That's interesting. Now the question is, is it just that the fish have moved away because I've had so many of them? Or is it just that the bean came off, or just that they don't like the beans so much. Anyway, what we're going to do is go back to four or five bits of sweet corn again, because we know that works, and we'll see if that produces much. And I can get uh, five pieces on this hair, so that's quite a reasonable size bait too. Well, four if you count the one that fell off. Right, let's uh, get some bait on. be interesting to see how quick, indeed, if I do actually get a bite on this now, because, as I say, I really don't know whether it's just slowing down or if it's the um, different baits or what. Well, that's what we're here to try out, so there we go. Bit of a bump. There's obviously fish there because uh, last time when I was on the big butter bean I was getting sort of knocks and bumps. It could have been something like small fish or turtles I suppose but it could just have been something took the, the butter bean off the hook. That looks like a bite to me, doesn't it? Yeah it does. <laughs> there we go. So that was fairly quick again. I'll give it one more go on the corn and see how quick the bites come. And then we'll think about going back onto something else. That's snagged up on the bottom. It's, uh, there's rocks out there and all sorts, so I'll give it a bit of slack and hopefully it'll pull itself off that. Or not. No, that's pretty snagged solid. <sighs> I got caught on that once before, but it came off. It's definitely not a fish look, it's just staying there. I wonder if the fish has come off altogether. We'll just let it have a bit of slack. That's the problem with these rivers, they're full of stones. Although this one, up until today, I haven't really had stones, it's only occasionally been shopping trolleys. No. Nah. Hmm. Because it could be the cage feeder that's caught up as well, which is not a good thing. Try and not get sand in my reel. Yeah, it's grunting against something there, I can feel it. Yeah. <laughs> I've lost the lot, I can feel that go. I suspect that was the feeder caught up. Oh well. There's a the line. Back in a minute once I've sorted myself out. Okay, well, it's been a few minutes then, obviously, while I got tackled up again. Could have done without that. And it's uh, allowed the swim to go a bit cold in terms of bait going in. So I'm going to cast this one in. 
I'm not going to leave it all that long before I put another one in, regardless of whether I get a bite or not. I could just put it in and just uh, feed feed, but you never know, they might still be there, so let's give it a go. Right, I had clipped up just then just to test. So I've unclipped now, and we're off to the races again. <laughs> These things are sent to try us sometimes, but certainly been a, a good period so far, hasn't it? Probably less than an hour in. Hmm, no, gone quiet since I snapped up, so we're gonna get two more lots of bait in. One just casting and one um, obviously fishing. Just to literally get that bed down there again. There's plenty of particles in it, but as I said, so many fish in this place that uh, it's often the way it goes. If you slow down on the feed, they slow down feeding too. Right, hopefully we can get them back fairly quick. We'll soon find out. I just looked down at my bait. I was going to put uh, some of these red kidney beans on, but I've noticed they're all starting to split on the skin. Now, they're all underwater. Um, but it does seem that there's one. Yeah, there's quite a few of these splitting. We'll see how they go with a couple of these on. But even further down in the water, they're still split. So I think kidney beans... Maybe not. Alright, um, we'll go to chickpeas then. By the way, all these are out of a tin. Um, if you're going to do these things fresh, then you do need to, I think, boil them for a given period of time. By all means, look that up on the internet because I'm no expert on chickpeas. But we'll give these a bit of a, a go and see what happens. Oh, hang on. Maybe not then. <laughs> yeah. We get chickpeas as well, so that's two things sorted out. We'll go with a slightly smaller cannellini bean, and that seems to be fine still. You said? Yeah, again, they're all splitting, look. Well, yep, again. All right, how about a butter bean? I think more research required here, because all of these are splitting. Yes, that one's not. We'll try that. As I say, I've never used these beans before. It's always a first for me too. And they do seem to do the job, but there may be issues with storage. So if any of you have got any information about how to stop these things from splitting when you're fishing, by all means stick it in the comments down below. I'll be all ears on that one because I think they could be a good bait, it's just they're not going to be any good if they just split all the time. Admittedly it's a warm day, it's not that warm. Oh, I think that's a bite. Seems to be swimming towards me. <laughs> Very strange. There's something on the end, I just don't know what it is. Oh, oh it's woke up now, look. Came right down to below me there. And then decided to wake up. It is a carp. <laughs> and it's a very small carp on a very large bean. Still, never mind. It's a carp. I have found some beans in the cannellinis and the, the butter beans, which are okay, but definitely I'm going to need to look into the the way these are stored so they don't split open like these have been doing. I mean, pretty small, but it got it in its mouth all right. <laughs> there. Oh, that's got to be. 
bit of bite on it. That was much quicker. It's coming around that thing again, whatever it is. Ah, oh, dear, oh dear. Let's try and get some slack on him just to see if he'll pull away from it. I'm going to shorten the distance, I think. Just come a bit further in. Because whatever that is, it was snagging me up on it again. All right, he's pulled away and it's pulled it off the snag. I've got a feeling it's a sunken tree. So I think we'll come in two metres, pay the price of uh, my base, my bait further over there. But at least I shouldn't keep getting snagged up all the time on the feature. Back to small fish again now, look. I'm pretty sure that must be a log that's sunk out there because as you can see along this bank here, it's all sand. And this is tiny. <laughs> Oops. There we are. I don't know how many it is we've caught, but we are catching on both um, corn and the big beans. Oh, come off. <laughs> Might just have a couple of very quick casts here just to uh, get some bait into this area. They should move. Interesting to see. Oh, I got a bite straight away, <laughs> and that was two meters short. Well, <laughs> they're obviously moving around the area. But it looks at the moment, though, the as though the the corn has definitely got the edge in terms of uh, usability, and you can make it into a big bait too. I like the idea of using the, the big beans as a single bait rather than having to put four or five bits of corn on. But certainly so far, um, a lot of them, the skins have sort of broken and they're coming apart a little bit. But it's worth a go, wasn't it? Woof, okay, fish. This one's probably three pound. Oops. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, three pound eight, but at least we're catching again. Okay, we're going to try one of these butter beans again. See how that works. I've got one that hasn't split. Plenty of small fish there. Just a question of uh, see if we can sort out a bigger one or not. Looks quite good on there, doesn't it? I have had one or two spin up, which is not good on the way back. Again, learning curve. I think that might be a bite. It is a bite, and it's a fish. It was just a very strange bite. Oh, pulled out. Oh, didn't I? No, I was on something. No, I'm on that snag. Ah, dearie, dearie. Oh, well. See if we do it to see if we can get it off. Can do without that. Uh, no, I think we're stuck solid on it. No, nah, lost a lot again. Ah, dearie, dearie. Ah, well. We've had two or three hours at it, and uh, I think I'm going to give it best at that. It's uh, I'm going to keep losing tackle on that snag. Um, we'll come back another day and we'll give it a try. And uh, honestly, I'm not totally sure of what to, to make of this. Um, yes, they do seem to work, but they do seem to have downsides. Um, this, this swim has really just uh, been a bit of a mess today, but caught plenty of fish. So I have enjoyed myself, don't get me wrong. Um, now I've got to make some more <laughs> feeders to replace the ones I've just lost. As I said at the start, if you've got any uh, comments about how to um, properly store these uh, cannellini beans, butter beans, kidney beans and all the rest of it, um, then please put some comments down in the um, comment section down below. I'd be happy to listen to what you've got to say. Um, but really, that's it, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, as always, if you did, please click the like button. If you want to subscribe, feel free. And if you want to contribute to the channel by donating, 
that's always appreciated too. And a couple of um, quick ones for you. Um, I had one from Jason Rebelo and Peter Reem, uh, both um, donated a small amount um, this week. As I say, every small amount helps, especially when you're losing kit all over the place. But hey, look, um, it doesn't matter. I've enjoyed it, you've enjoyed it. That's all that counts. Anyway, see you next time. Bye.